Man, and you'll you'll sit in court long enough, and my judge is the king of this. But he's like, uh, Judge, we want to stop visitation today. You file a motion? Well, no. Well, then it's not getting heard today. And motions are to let people know what's going on. It's like, Judge, we didn't have time to prepare for this. And we're just going to kind of do it on the fly? Well, yeah, but the kids are... They don't want to, you know, really visit with mom and dad. Well, then you should have set a motion. So motions are set things in motion. Does that make sense? <laughs> motions set things in motions in order to have things heard and people know in advance. Motions are argued by both sides in the present, both sides present in their case for granting or not granting the request. Um, Motions have to be reported verbatim, which is word for word. And all arguments by opposing counsel and rulings by the judge are important matters that need to be recorded and transcribed accurately. Yeah, because I mean, in motions, is you know, they say, you know what, judge, um, we need to have visit stopped. Well, why? Well, does this really need to be on the record? Yeah. Mom's coming to these visits and whipping the crap out of these kids. You know, whatever, and, and we want, oh, okay, you know what? Well, then, you know what? We want to take it up on appeal. We didn't think it needed to be on the record. They're always on the record, always. So, I mean, you'll find that. The judge is going to tell you, you know what? We have motions today, and we're going to have motions to stop visitation. You better believe you're going to be in there. Motion in limine is a Latin phrase. In limine means at the beginning. A motion in limine is a motion made at the, at the outset of a trial in an attempt to suppress damaging or inadmissible evidence that the other side may want to use, okay? So you have a guy that's going to trial for rape. Well, this isn't his first time, you know? He's raped 12 other women. Well, you know what, Judge? It's kind of damaging to our case. What he did in the past is, shouldn't be brought before this jury because, you know, what had happened 10 years ago. Well, they brought in motion in limine to have all of that left outside and only have it tried, only have him tried for this one thing that he did. Now, when it comes to the uh, sentencing phase, that's all going to come in. But it's like, you know what, we don't want this stuff to come in that he's been um, found guilty of these 12 other rapes or whatever. So we don't want that to come in. And, you know, it's stuff like that. You know, or you know what, Judge? Uh, my judge, my client got pulled over d for DWI, and we don't want that. This is his third DWI to come in, and the jury be swayed because, and he wasn't even drunk. I mean, he had taken a cap full of Nyquil and smelled like alcohol, and he tested positive on the test, and blah blah blah. But they're going to find him guilty. We know they are because he was found guilty three other times. Stuff like that. So that's in limine before. Motion for a bill of particulars. A bill of particulars is a document made by the plaintiff at the request of the defendant. It is a detailed account of the charges made against the defendant. The defendant's attorney frequently makes a motion for a bill of particulars when the plaintiff in a civil or criminal case has claimed the cause of action is vague, general, or indefinite. So if they're just saying, yeah, we're going to sue him um, because he lives on Market Street. No, you can't just sue somebody for that. You, you know what? We want a bill of particulars. Why are you suing him? Well, he lives on Market Street and right there is, you know, there's a lot of drug activity and he's a known drug dealer. So, you know, that's why we're bringing this cause of action against him and he was found, you know, with drugs on him. So they, all it does is explain exactly what the charges or the accusations that you're bringing against them. Motion to have claimant medically examined. Defense attorneys may often use a motion to have a claimant examined by an impartial medical expert in a personal injury case because many cases can be settled as a result of an examination. Well, you know what, Judge, my client has bipolar and at the time, he didn't, wasn't in his real mind and he didn't really know what he was doing. So we want a medical examination. Okay, so, or to find that they're medically competent to be able to stand trial.
motion for a change of venue. We've already kind of gone over this. Uh, I'm not going to go over it, you know, too much. And all that is is a motion to change um, the place where it's going to be heard. You know, if it happened here, and he was a prominent, well-known attorney here in San Antonio, well, you know what, Judge, he's not going to get a fair case or whatever. We're going to need to move this to. Um, Corpus Christi or somewhere out there. And that's what the change of venue is. <clears throat> Motion to disqualify a judge. A judge may disqualify him or herself from a case or a lawyer may make a motion to have the judge disqualified. Disqualification <coughs> usually occurs because the judge may have knowledge of the case or may have even represented one of the parties in the previous case. And it, it happens. I mean, even, you know, what happened to my judge a lot of times. I mean, and he just represented people. It's like, you know what? You know, and these guys do all kinds of cases from divorces, um, custody battles to criminal stuff. And so, you know what? I, are you Jack Smith, you know, that used to live on Zarzamora and Commerce? Yeah. You know what? I think represented you back. Oh, yeah, you sure did. But they can't hear the case now. You know, because if they find form, they're going to say, you know what? I mean, he represented the guy. I mean, the guy gave him a $10,000 retainer. And, you know, now all of a sudden they're going to start finding reasons, you know, to, to find that, you know, he, he was swayed one way or another because of that. Motion for continuance of a case. A motion for continuance of a case is simply a request to postpone the trial until a later date or a court, a court session. A motion for continuance is made for a variety of reasons, including the substitution of counsel, unavailability of witnesses, military service of parties or witnesses, absence of material evidence that can be obtained in the future. So it can be one of, a, of you know, many things. I mean, and you see it all the time. You know, these guys come in and it's like, you know what, Judge? Um, I, I'm filing a motion to withdraw off this case because my client hasn't paid me any money. And we go to trial on Monday. Most of the time, the judge is going to say, you know what, tough, you know, you're going to go. Or, you know what, judge, I'm going to withdraw from the case because um, my client hasn't been able to pay me money. She needs a court-appointed attorney, so, and we don't go to trial until November. You know what, then that's fine. You know, you can get off the case. So there's a lot of reasons for a continuance of a case. Motion for amendment of the pleadings. Either counsel may make motions for an amendment of pleadings, including the addition or deletion of parties to an action or severance of defendants from jointly tried cases. So they may say, you know what? We have three defendants in this case, but we're gonna sever them out. Sever means to take out. Take out and they're gonna try them separately. So you know what? We're gonna sever them out of this case. We're still gonna try them, but we don't want them to be tried together. We want them to be tried separately and that's what severance means, okay? Motion for summary judgment during preparation of a case, either party decides that no real issue of fact to be decided at trial. A motion for summary judgment may be made requesting the court to grant judgment in favor of the party filing the motion. <clears throat> so you know what, Judge? I mean, they don't really have a case. So we're asking for a motion for summary judgment or it's just so blatant that it's like, Judge, really, I mean, you know, the guy said he was there. The guy said he took the money. I mean, we want a motion for summary judgment, and we're asking for the $10,000 that he stole. You know, whatever. Okay, well, motion granted. So that's what a motion for summary judgment is, is that they get granted whatever they were asking for because it's the case is so blatant. Motion to dismiss for want of prosecution if the defendant fails feels as though the court does not have the proper authority to hear or decide a case, the attorney for the defendant will make a motion to dismiss for want of jurisdiction. Yeah. Don't understand that? It's pretty straightforward. Motion to dismiss or lack of prosecution after a case has been on file for a long period of time with no action by the plaintiff's attorney to prepare for trial the defendant and attorney may ask for a motion to dismiss for lack of prosecution and i think i i brought that up what last week or two weeks ago monday or last week 
anyway, where, where the guy was killed in that accident and his wife brought the action and they didn't do anything for like three years and there was other people that died in the thing and the uh, company had settled with everyone except for this lady and she just let the thing go on. And they're like, Judge, I haven't done anything in three years. I haven't received a piece of paper on this thing for three years. You know what, we're gonna dismiss. And you dismiss for lack of prosecution because they're doing nothing. Motion to non-suit. A plaintiff's motion requesting the court to dismiss the case either with prejudice or without prejudice is referred to as a motion for non-suit. In some jurisdictions, this motion is referred to as a voluntary dismissal. So it's like, you know what, Judge? Um, the kid came in because, you know, he ran a stop sign or whatever and uh, or he was texting on the phone and, you know, come to find out it, he didn't even have a phone. He, he didn't even have a phone. The officer said he had a phone, he was texting, whatever, and he wasn't. I mean, and we have on video where, you know, they don't have it, so we're just going to dismiss the case. So really all it does is just non-suit, is just dropping the case of whoever brings the case before someone. So you can, you can non-suit for prejudice or without prejudice. Prejudice means that, you know what, they had absolutely no evidence to bring it and they can't bring it again. Without prejudice means, you know what, if something comes up and we find out later that it was, then we can bring the action back later on. But right now we're going to non-suit the case and we'll just file a totally different case if we find out that it's different. Motion for a protective order. Excuse me. Ask the court to allow one side to hold back temporarily from showing the other side certain documents or other things about the case. This type of motion also asks for court protection for a person of harassment, uh, service of process, and other similar situations. So, I mean, if you're having problems with someone or whatever and you need a protective order, that's what it is. But, I mean, in order to, you don't just automatically get it. You have to bring evidence that this person is harassing you and whatever, so they have to be served. They come to court. If you can't agree on it, then they say, you know what, I mean, this is our evidence. I mean, you know, he came in, beat her black and blue, and you know, this is it. So we need a protective order, you know, okay, well granted. Well, if you don't show any evidence, well, we want a protective order against him. Well, why? Well, look at him. Really? No. You have to bring some evidence that shows that they need protection from a certain person. Motion to compel is filed to require the opposing party to perform some acts such as to answer interrogatories or produce documents in accordance with the motion for production. If this motion is not responded to or action performed, it is set for a hearing and the court may impose sanctions including an order that the act be performed. So all they're doing is saying, you know what, Judge, we, we served them with interrogatories and it hasn't been answered, so we're filing a motion to compel. And a motion to compel, they can ask for a lot of things. You know what? We want the answers filed and we served them in time, so now we want attorney's fees. So you can ask for a lot of things to be compelled. You know what? And now we want it, instead of they usually get 30 days, now we want it in 15 days because all they're doing is wasting time. We gave it to them 45 days ago, and they haven't done anything. So motion to compel is asking for permission for stuff to be done, and the court orders them to do it. Motion for writ of habeas corpus. A writ of habeas corpus is a judicial order to someone holding a person to bring that person to court. It is used to get a person out of unlawful imprisonment or confinement by forcing the person in custody to bring that person to court for a decision on the legality of the imprisonment. A motion for a writ of habeas corpus may be inquiring the reason for detention of a defendant or obtaining his or her release. A writ of habeas corpus too is like well, um, Judge, my kids had visitation with their dad and their dad didn't bring them back. They were supposed to be back Sunday at six and it's Tuesday already and the kids still aren't back. So we need a writ for writ of habeas corpus. And that's given uh, you know, the authorities the permission to go in there and find those kids. You know, so they're, you know, they issue it to somebody, maybe a private detective or the police and they go and get those kids out. That's what a writ of habeas corpus is for them to be able to go and get somebody for certain purposes. 
motion to dismiss a complaint at the end of the plaintiff's case. And again, at the end of the entire case, the defendant's attorney may make a motion to dismiss the complaint. Examples of arguments for requesting such a motion include the plaintiff has failed to establish negligence on the part of the defendant. defendant contributory negligence was exhibited on the part of the plaintiff and the accident complained of was not the proximate cause of the alleged injuries or the evidence is insufficient to base the complaint to base the complaint on and the indictment is incorrectly worded so let's just say you have an accident and somebody rear ends you and that guy goes on Monday and files a lawsuit against you saying you know what she caused the accident Really? You rear-ended her. You weren't paying attention, texting or whatever, and rear-ended her, and he's gonna bring suit against you? And you prove that, I mean, a lot of times you don't even have to prove it. If somebody rear-ends you, 97% of the time, they're gonna be found um, negligent. So it's like, you know, you're the one who ran into the back of me. You should have been paying attention. So that's what it is, to dismiss a complaint. <clears throat> Motion for mistrial. A mistrial occurs when the judge ends a trial and declares that it will have no legal effect on either party. A mistrial occurs whenever a major defect in procedure occurs, such as counsel being guilty of misconduct, the inability of material witness or a party to continue on the witness stand, or the death or sickness of a juror with no alternate appointed. Mention of insurance may cause a motion for mistrial. And I think they give some examples on 11.1. We're not gonna go through that, but if you wanna read that, read it. So I have a question about that. Is that a form, like a form field you just put in? What's or it? is this actually what is being said? That's motion? actually the motion itself. This is the motion, this is yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. So this is what you write. It's not like we motion for mistrial and you Click a button and all of this comes in. No, this is what the attorney draws up. So this is the actual motion. So this is the motion that the attorney brings. So this isn't wow. something that you That's would do. Not, yeah. It's not like an objection. No, no. Interesting. So this is something that they bring. This is the motion that's filed. So it's not something that is said, you know, necessarily on record. This is what the motion looks like. Motion to view premises. During the trial, a request may be made by either counsel to have the jury view the scene where an alleged criminal offense has taken place, for example, at an arson scene or a hazardous intersection where a collision occurred. Yeah. And I think I, I gave that example um, of, I think, a bulldozer. We had to go view a bulldozer one time or something, and, you know, so, yeah. Motion for a new trial. After a case has been tried and a verdict is reached, defense counsel will usually make motions requesting a new trial. If the losing party feels as though the verdict is excessive or not supported by the facts, a motion may be made requesting a settling aside of the, a setting aside of the verdict. So like I was telling you last week, I mean, you come in and it was a fender bender or whatever, and it's like, you know what, we're asking for $10,000. Well, the jury accidentally awards them a million dollars because the lawyer was a jerk and the jury hated him and it's like you know what we're gonna get back at that guy and we're just gonna give this guy a million dollars really so they can ask for a motion for a new trial to go up in front of another court because you know what they didn't ask for a million dollars I don't care if they didn't like the attorney or not you know the way that he put on his case is the way he put on his case and you know they didn't like it so all of a sudden they asked for a million dollars Motion to strike. A motion to strike certain evidence may be made for any of the following reasons. When evidence presented was apparently proper when received, but later shown to be objectionable. When evidence is admitted subject to the understanding that it will be ruled on later in trial. When a witness makes a voluntary statement or testifies when no question is pending. When an answer is not responsive to a question. So they can ask, you know, uh, uh, judge, I want that last answer stricken. And the guy said, uh, state your full name. She's guilty. <laughs> what? <laughs> Judge, I want that last answer stricken. Yeah. You know, because it had nothing to do with the question he even had. You know, they just yeah. blurted something out. And it had nothing to do with what they were asking for. So, 
that mean you have to go back later and take it out of your transcript? Or it's no, it's just time? in there. So you're just writing what they're saying again. You know, and, and, and another court has the opportunity to say, oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, you don't just go in there and take it out. Okay, you just kind of write down what they say. So really what it is is for appellate purposes or somebody else, if it goes up to a higher court, to understand what was going on there. I think that's what they said. The court reporter writes all testimony included and all discussions concerning the striking of a matter from the record. This material includes the motion, the ruling by the court, and all conversations between counsel and the court. In addition, all testimony and discussions are included in the transcript. The court's ruling that certain matters may be stricken from the record or may go out means that the jury should disregard it in the consideration of their facts. So it doesn't mean that you strike it out of the record itself. It doesn't mean that. It just means that the jury shouldn't consider it or the next court, if it goes up on appeal, that the Court of Appeals doesn't consider it either. Okay? Any questions about that? So motions are made outside of trial, like before trial begins. Are motions made during the trial? Yeah, they can be. Okay. They can be. So they, motions can be made almost any time. Okay. Now whether it's, you know, and it's like, well, did you file a motion? Well, I'm asking, and I want an oral motion to have visitation stopped now. I mean, that's kind of big, so yeah, you didn't give the other side enough time, so no. That one's not going to be considered, but you can bring a motion anytime. Any questions? No? no. All right. Guys, be here Monday. All right? Guest speaker, be ready with your questions, too. Got it? Got it. All right. See you on Monday.